Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the BMW M5 competition. The competition is the sportier version of the M5. The M5 is the sportier version of the 5 series. The 540i. The 540i is the sportier version of the 530. Okay, forget all this. Let's open the engine bay of this vehicle. You can see that the engine is actually pushed towards the cabin and it's a piece of art. It says BMW M power right there. The M logo, of course, on the engine cover and there is insulation on the top as well. What a lovely looking engine bay. Isn't that fantastic? Obviously hydraulic struts as well. And you can see the design is really very nice because it is at the end of the day a Pi series. So this is where the indicator is. These are the lights of the car. They're very bright at night. And this is actually known as the BMW Adaptive LED. Look at the attention to detail on the inside. Looks lovely. You get front parking sensors. You obviously get a front parking camera as well. Gloss black finish on the front grille. M5 written right there and the grill obviously does not open or close because it really needs to breathe well. In fact, after turning off the car for almost 20 minutes also, <laughs> it's still making the fan noise because it really needs to breathe. This is the camera of the car, the front camera, which is properly integrated. Look at the aggression of the front bumper. Looks really very aggressive. Looks like someone which is, I mean, very angry car is going to gobble up everybody just to cool itself and force feed the turbochargers. Obviously, just kidding. Anyways, you see the strut bar? Yep. This car is a work of art. I love the lights. The attention to detail is mind blowing. The car looks phenomenal. Anyways, coming to the side of this vehicle, you see it's nothing but the regular BMW 5 series. However, because of the bigger wheels, it kind of looks sportier, but it looks very subtle as a car. It doesn't shout out loud how fast it is. These rims are obviously 20 inches, 275, 35, 20s at the front, at the rear also, same size tire, only thing it's 10 mm wider. You see, M logo is given here on the wheels. And of course, you get the blue colored brake caliper with M badging on it. Wheels look really nice. See the size of the disc, massive, absolutely massive disc size as well. Okay, you get the gloss black finish on the wheels as well. M5 written here, you can actually opt for having M5 competition also written here. Now, this is, yeah. It's actually functional from the top, but for the most part, it is on the fake side. Okay, these M-specific mirrors look really very nice. Look at the design. Wow. And of course, you get the indicator here as well. Ground clearance isn't that great, but will do for the most part. You get a subtle side skirt as well. So this car is all about being subtle. It's not over the top loud as such. It's actually a nice thing so that people don't bother you as much. Okay, this is where the fuel goes. And you see, it's telling you the ethanol compatibility of the car, but Air pressure is not written here. Usually that is the case with German cars. All right, there is no sunroof on offer. Happy? There is no sunroof on offer. Oh my God, how will this car sell? India needs a sunroof to sell everything other than the Toyota Fortuner, of course. But this is actually a carbon fiber roof. Light in weight and you obviously get BMW's trademark shark fin antenna again finished in gloss black. When you come to the rear, you realize the attention detail continues because BMW is written here inside the light. The lights obviously are really very nice. It says M5 competition here to tell you that this is serious business. The rear camera obviously sticks out like this and you get rear parking sensors of course but honestly it is the way the car looks from the rear is mind-blowing it gets a diffuser of course it's a functional one it gets quad pricking exhaust yeah and obviously the lower half of the bumper is finished in gloss black as well let me get close and show this to you what a design of the bumper just look at the underpinnings my goodness if this does not give you an orgasm nothing will and the exhaust really very hot okay this is at idle and you see there's insulation material all around because there's a lot of heat this car generates in fact if you do a spirited run the car heats up to a point that you're like super worried as well that's a reflector and the fog lamp is here yeah this is the reverse fog lamp only on the right side of course the design is something which only people who understand subtle aggression will understand of course and uh, you see the gap between the body and the wheel is so little yeah there is no suspension play allowed on this car because the ground clearance is lower on the m5 competition when compared to the m5 now you see this is obviously the mud flap of the car and side skirts could have been finishing gloss black as well but hey i am no designer anyways let's open the boot of the bmw m5 competition as if you care about it but still how does this open well i press a button here on the remote and it opens the warning triangle is put here on the top 
the boot is useless as such because the spare wheel is put on top on the boot floor and obviously it's a smaller size tire and also a steel wheel well you really cannot run it on this car it look obnoxious but then it is only a stop gap till you get to a tire guy to get your tire replaced puncture fixed or maybe get a new one as well which has to come from germany <laughs> anyways you see there is storage space here and uh, below here there is some stuff kept actually i think uh, there is the manual of the car probably because the first aid kit is kept here the manual is here it says m on it and the manual is oh my god it's a massive manual it's like 391 pages big but i love the quality of the cover really nicely done everything inside this car is all about attention to detail like massive attention to detail but i can't fix this right now just forget that for a moment what is this then okay that is for the tire okay in case you want to switch the tire why have they kept it like this okay that's a number plate holder anyways to close the boot you can press the button on the remote and close it or you can simply press this button here and there the boot closes yeah this is something which you usually do not see in a sedan but it's there obviously you see it in s class and all those cars now it gets a subtle lip spoiler it's super duper subtle and uh, a big wing would have really made the car look a bit ricey it's not needed the doors are big and of course it's got sun blinds here as well yeah manually adjustable sun blinds so you can manually adjust the sun blind and the quality of the cabin is phenomenal look at the leather look at the stitching beautiful blue stitching the quality is amazing and the door pockets are massive because there are three compartments here says m5 right there on all the doors and uh, the rear seat experience is i would say just about decent because the seat is a bit too low which means under thigh support actually suffers okay the seat belts actually get the m colors on it and i've not even taken the time to remove the seat belt covers cars absolutely brand new yeah space wise good enough for four probably two people you don't like because once you accelerate things are going to fly for sure you've got rear ac controls here let's turn them off for a moment because they're making noise four zone climate control of course you've got two usb c's one hdmi port and an aux port as well and two usb c charging ports too along with a 12 volt charging socket as well okay that's more like a cigarette lighter i would say ac vents are placed in the center they're placed here as well and uh, there's a hook here there's a handle and a hook here on the other side as well and of course like i told you the sun blinds are manually adjusted oh my god who's staring at us Oh it's you Mr AMG how are you I know the A63 has been discontinued but you're attacking her with the GT63 AMG four door four matic plus coupe okay, it's a long name <laughs> this is obviously electrically adjusted and light placement on the top meanwhile the seats are really very nice it gets isofix child seat mounts of course and uh, the recline angle is also pretty good there is a center armrest which is very much needed I'll tell you why firstly it gets twin cup holders the problem is that there's a massive hump here so third passenger not at all comfortable not at all welcome here either there's good amount of knee room and leg room on offer but you know under thigh support well could have been better headroom is about adequate i would say yeah for a person of my height it's adequate enough and the recline angle is also pretty nice seats are very comfortable although a little bit on the stiffer side you get dual screens right there and all you do is press a button that touch operated screens why are you not turning on yeah there they are okay you can operate a lot of stuff here and obviously you can get into theater mode too first and foremost you get the map you get your position i think you know positioning map wise all those things are super important you can get traffic information too and it has got apps installed apps we'll talk about it once you get ahead you can obviously browse through media you can also browse through uh, you know the interior lighting here so this is obviously for the display rear display brightness you can increase or decrease i think it's on the top most brightness the most bright right now how was the day you can control all the ambient lighting and uh, basic various parameters you would want to control if you're sitting in the rear bench but i doubt anybody would really be wanting to sit in the rear bench lot of colors here on offer the ambient light looks beautiful at night we'll talk about it once we get at the front the dashboard is a bmw 5 series is dashboard of course but it's got some sporty treatment as well to give it the m madness so you see the quality of the speakers bowers and wilkins really nice you can see the ambient lighting in the day as well it's kind of on the darker side i will see you later okay bye and don't scare everybody with your drift mode because this car doesn't have a drift mode but it still has a drift mode again we will talk about it once we start driving the car now another cool thing about this car is that it gets soft door close of course you expect that at this price point so here you go and there yeah, it sucks it in and close the door so we'll do that again this is so satisfying Yep, that's how it's done. All the doors get a request sensor. It's just not the driver door. That's again a nice thing because a lot of these luxury cars do not have it. The Evoque did not have it. The Discovery Sport did not have it. And I was always scrambling for the key to open the door. Like I told you, or did I not? Okay, 285 section tires at the rear. 285 35 20s. 
फ्रंट इज टू सेवेंटी फाइव टायर्स आर नॉट रियली एज वाइड आई वॉज बड़ा मैसे एज आई वुड हैव एक्सपेक्टेड बट एक्चुअली दिस सुपर वाइड द एक्सवाइज टायर्स आर सो मैसेव ना दैट एवरीथिंग एल सीम स्मॉल बट लुक एट द साइज ऑफ दिस टायर दैट इज मैसेव and i love the way the rear end has rather the under body of the car has been done it's so sporty and so appealing parking sensors are everywhere in fact it's also got a camera here on the outside rear view mirror meanwhile at night it obviously projects some amount of light on the floor it doesn't project any m or so obviously the amgs do it black color b pillar so lot of attention to detail oh my god the dashboard looks so nice like i was telling you m5 is every freaking bear you will never mistake this car for anything else obviously you can mistake it for a 5 series now the door pockets at the front are large enough you see there's good amount of space on offer for a bottle for your papers this is also to open the boot of the car you can actually press it and there the boot opens and you can also close the boot from here itself so if i keep the button pressed there the boot also closes and all this actually happens from a touch of a button which is nice power tailgate for the win for sure the seats are super comfortable very sporty indeed look at the side bolstering it's amazing and this m5 badging here well i kid you not it lights up as well that's so cool ah oh, that is so satisfying okay bowers and wilkins yeah these are very high tech speakers and tweeters in fact at night okay you can see they are lighted up in white color and you can press a button to turn off the light and they just don't turn off immediately they fade in and fade out looks so beautiful just to lock or unlock the vehicle memory seats both for the front passengers you get up to two settings which you can save of course and these are the controls for the power windows this is obviously for the child lock which does not child lock the door it only child locks the windows and this is obviously for the outside rear view mirrors you can close or open the outside rear view mirrors with a press of a button meanwhile this is actually to open or close the rear sun blind the one you see there yeah press a button and you can actually fold it folds really nicely and sweetly okay i can see amg staring at why there is so much heat coming because that car also has a v8 motor so the dashboard will remind you of the 5 series because it is a 5 series dashboard this is a 5 series on absolute max steroids or you can just say 5 series ultra max pro 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 ultra and there is storage space here as well that's a nice storage space actually this is where most people store their cigarettes to hide them away from their wives that's the information i have got from the research which i have done and these are obviously the controls for the lights obviously it gets automatic headlights it gets automatic wipers as well there's no front fog this for the rear fog this for the parking light if you want to just park the car this is to turn on the right side parking light this is to turn on the left side parking light and see the beautiful leather finish of course the stitching is amazing next level here you got a lot of piano black which is a fingerprint magnet too now like i was telling you the seats are super comfortable you can adjust for lumbar as well there's so many buttons you will be confused which button should you be pressing but don't worry there's some method to the madness oh my god i can feel the heat the car just turned on on efficient mode and all the heat is coming to me obviously tire pressure recommendation is here usually it should be there near the fuel lid and uh, you get a proper dead pedal there as well let's get inside finally oh my god i love this car it smells so nice you know why it smells so nice obviously the glove box is lockable and it's not really big in terms of size but there is a fragrance canister here it has two fragrances which we will talk about in a bit see the lining is so well done but that lining should have been there on the door as well the door pockets too which is the case with the skoda super not in the 5 series which is kind of shocking and uh, i love the dashboard design you see ambient lighting works beautifully well on this car sort of a carbon fiber finish actually it is carbon fiber finish and below here you've got storage space twin cup holders there's a cigarette lighter too i was telling you about the cigarette theory now you understand me and there is a wireless charging pad along with a usb charging socket as well the unfortunate part though is that big phones will just about fit you have to squeeze them in you probably have to remove their covers as well which is really bad and below here there's storage space as well there is actually a usb c charging socket along with a light and decent amount of storage too see the finishing on the car's leather it's so well done it's beautiful this tan leather looks so amazing this triple tone color okay you've got this carbon fiber finish in the center you've got a uh, blackish sort of finish and soft touch materials leather below and you see velvet treatment what do you call alcantara actually alcantara finish here on the top side so of course the pillars are finished in that the roof is also finished in that and you get a mirror here along with a light this is actually the mic receptor and same is on the other side as well there is a mirror and light here too and plenty of lights here like lot of them but there is no button to open the sunroof because this car obviously does not get a sunroof it gets this beautiful alcantara finish on the top but no sunroof it's a very light roof 
is obviously a handle to hold on to there's a handle to hold on to for the driver as well because this car has so much power even the driver needs to hold on for dear life <laughs> anyways uh, all the warnings and all are coming telling me to put in park it's already in park uh, so it keeps telling me lot of messages so let's do one thing let's browse through this beautiful infotainment system first and foremost let me tell you it gets a four zone climate control system it works beautifully well the seats are actually heated yeah i mean it gets a heated seat function it's not heated you have to opt to do it yeah heated seats Globally, I've seen it also gets ventilated seats. Ventilated seats should have been offered in India. In fact, I think Bowers and Wilkins is also optional. So yeah, a lot of optional kit on a test car. You see, the center console is tilted a bit towards the driver, and you got this piano black finishing. This is to turn on and off the stop-start system. This is the engine start button, which is finished in red. Looks really very nice, and you've got so many buttons here. Firstly, this is obviously for the iDrive controller. This is the best controller I have seen. It's super slick and easy to use. Thankfully, it doesn't get a touch pad like in the case of Mercedes cars, because this is so much better to use. Auto hold function, electric parking brake, and you see a lot of buttons here. First and foremost, this is for traction control, which is murder mode. This is obviously to change the settings. of the engine this is for the suspension settings and this is for the steering settings so this is how you do the setup of the car and this is for the active exhaust when this is turned on obviously the exhaust becomes really very loud this is for the parking sensors press this button and you can use the 360 degree parking sensors and this is for the parking camera you can browse through various modes of the parking camera as well one of the best parking cameras in the world or not the one of the best the best parking cameras in the world because it has got a 3d view birds eye view it works so beautifully well it shows you a side view of what's happening and it just switches camera so fast the software on this thing is mind blowingly phenomenal the screen is really very high res works beautifully well super fast it says uh, low tire pressure something of that sort okay i don't want to get into bmw roadside assistance at the moment but yeah it gets a slew of tech features too now you see these are obviously the ac controls this is for the audio system there's a cd changer here as well and i love how you can actually turn on and off the ac vents if you so wish however the ones in the 7 series are just better you know you can just touch the colors and change it this is obviously the hazard light button and you see this chrome line everything feels so subtle and well executed obviously it gets the m gear lever which looks really very nice you see the ambient light comes here on the car as well No, it's not the ambient light. It's actually coloured in red. This is to get into parking, and the gear lever feels really very nice. In fact, you can decide the shift speed of the gears by pressing this button to increase or decrease the shift speed. So while you can tweak all other parameters here, in order to tweak the gear settings, you have to press these buttons. Yeah, so nice. It's so customizable. You have to be really alert while driving the car. It's a little weird how to you know shift gears because in BMW cars it's like front and behind. That's it. But here you have to slot it in properly. The was parking camera works beautifully well on this car. Everything works flawlessly. The systems are amazing. But let's get into menu for a bit. Now there are widgets here and uh, you can just decide how you want to see the widgets. You can actually put your own widget. That's the compass I put not the Jeep kind. And obviously fuel economy is 2.3 kilometers per liter. My wallet already feels light. And tire pressure monitor I put here. Sports displays I put here which are really very cool. I will obviously, you know, put them when we're driving the car as well. Hey BMW. Good morning. What can I help you with? I'm feeling hot. Unfortunately this climate function cannot be voice controlled. All right, but in other BMW cars you can actually do it in the 3 series. I believe that feature would come with the 5 series as well. And since it's morning she's actually telling me good morning so she's a little sensitive and understanding as well. It's like you can be single by an M5 and still be happy being single because you have someone to back up to. Anyways, jokes aside, you can get into media, a lot of information here as well. There's Apple CarPlay, there's Android Auto connectivity, there's all that and more. And here obviously for the various phone commands and BMW assistance. Navigation works beautifully because the system is so good. I mean, look at the quality of the system. Let's do one thing. Let's get and see the earth and just rotate it like this. All you flat earthers, you've been proven wrong. Okay, now there are apps which I was talking about when we were sitting behind. However, this is not of much interest to me because BMW assistance and service request. What is of real interest to me is the car setting. Okay, there is a lot of information here. There is driving information where you get the journey data. Other than the journey data, you also get sport displays which I was showing you already. And there is energy flow which tells you how the power is being channeled to which wheel because it is obviously a four wheel drive car. Meanwhile, there is this M setup. Now, this is the most important thing. Firstly, you can configure M X drive. If you want, you can be in four wheel drive, four wheel drive, sport, or two wheel drive. When you get into two wheel drive, well, it turns off traction control, and that's the reason why I call it the suicide mode. Coming behind, you can obviously configure the heads up display. I'll increase the brightness for a moment. Yeah, that's the max bright. 
Okay, can you see the heads up display? I'm sure you can. Let's do one thing. Let's configure the M mode. So configure M2. M2 is this button here on the steering wheel. You can configure both these buttons. So quickly the car will adapt to the settings which you have chosen. And a lot of parameters can be chosen. So there's engine, of course, efficient sport, sport plus transmission, D1 to S3. Okay, what is D1? Actually, the D setting is for automatic. S makes it sport. And of course, manual yeah and once it's in manual of course you have to shift and the engine really does very fast however you know one two three is basically this you can actually choose one two three on the gear lever you don't have to come here now chassis also has plenty of settings comfort sport sport plus steering has comfort sport sport plus dsc obviously has on mdm and dsc off what is mdm mdm means m dynamic mode which actually lets you be a little playful so it's like esp sport in mercedes cars and the MX drive system I already showed you. Start stop system you can turn on and off. Sound control you can again turn on and off. And then there are different views as well. There's M view and there's standard view. So let's do one thing. Let me show you the M view. You can see that. Oh my God. Look at the heads up display. It is so beautiful. You don't have to look anywhere else because this instrument cluster will not tell you much because the heads up display is having your back. Now the instrument cluster looks a bit like the Verna which also I'm driving at the moment. It's kind of disappointing and it doesn't change its color again which is disappointing. Speedometer is marked at 330 km per hour because this car can actually go to 300 km per hour and it's got this anti-clockwise dials for the tachometer not the easiest to read cluster in the Verna of course you also get the ref counter which is digital here it does not tell you that all right a lot of information it's very high risk this is the distance to empty this is the fuel level meter this is the time these are the telltale lights which are placed here this is actually telling you the location it tells you the location in real time it's telling you you are in four wheel drive mode right now gear position indicator ambient temperature and this is the engine temperature again telltale lights are placed everywhere so if i want to browse through this well there's this button here bc it says bc it's not what you think you press this button and on the right side you can browse through a lot of stuff like tire pressure monitor this is telling you the power and torque consumption in real time as well and this is of course telling you about the media source at the moment this is telling you what mode you are in for the engine the suspension as well as the steering wheel too it's telling you the fuel economy of the car real time as well as what's actually the average is 2.3 kilometers per liter pretty bad i would say and this is telling you the odometer i'm revving the motor and their power and torque is increasing i think they need to revisit their dials and go back to the old ones for sure because this just does not look as great as the older classic bmw dials now like i was telling you m1 and m2 modes you can configure them and it says m right here these are actually the controls for the audio system and when you press this button you can actually check the heads up display if you want to change a song or any of that sort this is for voice commands this is to pick up a call here these are the controls for the cruise control and these are the paddle shifters which are really high quality ones okay this is obviously the wiper control you see the wipers work really well plenty of spray on offer and yes very nice wipers this is obviously the control for the indicators too and the steering wheel is adjust both for reach as well as rake it's an electric adjust steering wheel of course at this price point i expected massage as well but massage is missing somehow although i think it can be opted for so a lot of stuff which is actually optional on this car now let's get into this menu all right car is the place we want to be in first and foremost it obviously gets gesture control too so what we will do is we'll play a radio right away and okay the volume is at zero right now okay this is the physical volume controller let's increase the volume audio quality is really very nice fantastic somehow radio sucks so badly everyone puts an ad at the same freaking time and everyone plays similar songs as well it's kind of weird and awkward and frustrating too Anyways, you can get into settings and all the settings are here. Various settings like obviously interior, exterior lighting, driver assistance, displays, doors, blah, 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 interior lighting, seat comfort, climate control, and you can assign buttons to the keys as well. However, we're going to get into interior lighting at the moment. Now I was talking about the ambient lighting when I was sitting behind. You see, there are a multitude of ambient light options inside this car. It looks really nice and beautiful as well. Now, like I was telling you, there's so many buttons here for the seat control. You don't really know how to decide what, but once you press it, it actually shows you what is happening and it's really very high tech as well wow this is so amazing it feels so nice and well done look at the graphics you don't get confused with a ton of buttons because everything works flawlessly from here anyways there's not much to talk about because basically this is a bmw 5 series on steroids which has 30 layers of makeup 
but also has a rocket of a motor right in front so let's get driving right away but before we get driving let's get into climate control actually climate comfort why there is fragrance okay there are two fragrances blue sweet number one and golden sweet number two but there's something known as vehicle status as well and you see you get the tire pressure monitor engine oil level check control messages and service requirements so all this information the way the car spins look at the graphics yeah this is so freaking mind-blowing but all we really care about is the driving parameter let's go Right, we are all set to go straight away turning off the air conditioning and we get going straight away without any issue hey bmw sport displays sport displays now we have started to drive off in efficient mode yes everything is in the most comfiest of settings what i want to tell you that even in comfort mode with engine and efficient the gearbox taking a nap and the suspension being soft and the steering being light everything still this car is brutally quick because it picks up pace and it still sounds quite nice in spite of the fact that the active exhausts are actually off yeah there is a flap when you press it the active exhaust opens and the car's ride quality is just unbearably stiff yeah the old m5 was stiff the new one is stiffer didn't understand the logic of stiffening the suspension even further so it's 10 percent stiffer now yeah the springs are 10 percent stiffer the anti-roll bar has been revised the dampers have been retuned and the ground clearance is 7 percent lower as well at 128 mm these are the specific changes to the competition when compared to the regular m5 but yes there's no fun driving it in efficient mode so we press the m2 button which has been configured to banana mode as soon as you get into this mode all of a sudden the car takes off there's just so much thrust on offer it's absolutely mind-boggling the way this engine performs i think one of the best v8s right now because it has grunt throughout the rev range get into the gas it reacts so immediately and pushes ahead without any hesitation whatsoever so what is the difference between the m5 competitions engine and the regular m5s well 25 horsepower is the only difference this one produces 25 horsepower more all thanks to the fact that the engine has been retuned but you know what the same engine was actually seen in the previous generation of the m5 as well in the jahari edition now 625 horsepower at 6000 rpm which is maddening to say the least which is actually 13 horsepower more than its closest rival the e63 which makes 612 horsepower 600 horsepower in a sedan is absolute madness torque output remains the same which is 750 newton meters which actually comes at a very low 1800 rpm and stays there till 5860 rpm the horn is so so could have been better so you see the torque range is super wide on this car it is actually 0.1 second faster than the regular m5 and also 0.1 second faster than the e63s its closest rival driving and stop go traffic isn't that enjoyable although let me tell you that the drivability is really very nice turbo lag what's that it's very well contained but you know the initial punch isn't that fruity because you know what bmw is actually tuned the low end to not be very sharp just to preserve the gearbox that's the reason the faster you drive the harder it accelerates yeah that doesn't make sense but at speed it pulls so fast it pulls so hard it can make you wet in your pants so as soon as you get into the gas the gearbox shifts very fast in spite of the fact that this is actually a eight speed torque converter unit the previous generation of the m5 actually used a seven speed dct yeah a dual clutch unit but because they went four wheel drive for that they had to go for a torque converter because somehow they both match better and that's not all because of an eight speed unit fuel economy is also improved at least at coasting speeds because the claimed economy is 9.8 kilometers per liter in the real world you'll get between 2 to 5 kilometers per liter when you drive it in the most aggressive of setting now you realize that the suspension is supremely uncomfortable you can feel a lot you can feel the vibration on the camera right now you can feel the car is continuously moving it is stiff it has a ride quality which dare i say is terrible for indian roads at least on the track it's amazing 
because obviously it gives it great dynamic balance but otherwise yeah the ride quality is far from being impressive on the road there's this continuous movement which is happening now there are multiple drive modes on offer there are actually three drive modes and uh, no actually you can configure everything the number of configurations in this car is absolutely stellar in fact you just can't sit in this car and drive away you have to sit inside configure everything and understand what suits you best so you can alter the engine the gearbox the suspension the steering wheel and of course the four wheel drive as well as the traction control system so the result is that the engine can be put in efficient sport or sport plus the gearbox can be put into low medium and fast like three settings for it on the gear lever itself and of course the steering wheel and the suspension both can be put either in comfort sport or sport plus modes so you can configure everything in fact the best thing is that you can configure the traction control system so it can be regular dsc on which is the case right now so you don't kill yourself there's dsc sport which is mdm actually m dynamic mode wherein obviously it lets you play a little bit with oversteer and there is obviously dsc off which is kill mode <laughs> you know what in order to actually change the four wheel drive mode you have to do dsc off you have to turn off dsc and then you can alter the four wheel drive modes as well so there is four wheel drive four wheel drive sport which is the case when you activate mdm m dynamic mode and of course two wheel drive mode which is murder mode because you know what rear wheel drive only that's like drift mode you really need to be skillful to master it because it's not that easy to master this car although it's very easy to drive this car somehow and kind of feels too clinical in that sense and that's something which is the problem with newer cars they just feel so perfect for their own good now acceleration is absolutely immediate low end lag not there in fact this car has a linear pull with a great mid range punch and absolutely screams in the top end it redlines at 7000 rpm pulls so strongly it can wet you in your pants Oh my god and the exhaust also sounds stellar. All right, you have to segment for the exhaust as well. There's a regular balance quiet mode and of course there is the loud mode which actually is Diwali. It's bonkers. Let me be honest with you that the car does sound a bit artificial on the inside because unfortunately it has fake sounds coming from the speakers. But put that aside, outside it sounds really very nice, especially at idle when you rev it now, it pops, it cracks. It also does it on the inside but could have been a little bit more louder could have been more aggressive something what Mercedes does better with the AMG because the E63 feels more muscle car like this one feels on the edge in spite of having the best of everything it kind of feels on the edge in the way it performs and the, you know what I said this about the previous M5 as well I'm saying it about the competition too not the previous M5 the non competition version it feels very edgy at speed you really have to give a lot of steering inputs you can see I have to really work hard to pilot this car and that is because of the suspension which is very stiff extremely stiff the dampers my goodness <laughs> okay the mercedes obviously has an air suspension in a sports car mercedes has done a fabulous job in tuning that but this car is so fast because from 0 to 100 in 3.3 seconds it goes from 0 to 200 km per hour in 10.8 freaking seconds which is 0.3 seconds faster than the regular m5 and the steering wheel it's light it doesn't feel very heavy at higher speeds it weighs up but doesn't really communicate as much somehow you don't feel so connected to the front wheels which is an issue here otherwise stellar this car's performance this engine is so freaking good it pulls it pulls it pulls and it redlines at freaking 7000 rpm Oh my god what an engine in fact top speed is 250 km per hour which can be extended to 305 km per hour with the M drivers package you have to pay extra to actually increase the top speed so yeah this is a car which defies a lot of stuff especially physics but there's an issue the issue is the weight of this vehicle it's 1860 kg okay it's lighter than the regular M5 thanks to this carbon fiber roof but the car which I drove first the earlier M5 was the first edition which anyways had a carbon fiber roof it didn't have a sunroof so yeah weight reduction here and there just to improve the performance of the car and it works really well but still you can feel the weight of this car it actually masks its weight brilliantly well when you're dri not driving hard but get to get onto a track and really push it hard and you can feel that weight there's plenty of weight in this car which can be felt on the edge but that said Honestly body roll is very well contained there's no body roll as such the grip from the tires is massively awesome but you know what because of these massive tires there is a lot of tire noise which can be heard as well so yeah insulation could have been better and right now we are having the M display on the heads up display which also looks super duper awesome brakes are very nice sure footed but you know what a little squeaky so in terms of handling it does handle very nicely only thing is it could have communicated a lot more now let me be honest with you the E39 M5 is still the benchmark the first M5 which came in 1984 the E28 really rewrote a lot of things the first sport sedan the first fast go fast sedan 
which really changed everything but unfortunately with time the m5 experience is going down yes this is much better than the f10 m for sure the f90 which is based on the g30 of the 5 series is stellar in the way it's able to balance a lot of things but the f10 m wasn't really reliable this new one definitely feels a step up in a lot of ways it feels more connected but still feels a little artificial thanks to the fake sounds and the lack of connect from the steering wheel i mean it could have transmitted a lot more on the inside but you hear that kick back on upshift so it pops it cracks it does all of that and more which is just music to the ears now if you want to drift you can get into two wheel drive mode like i told you but traction levels are fantastic it's more rear bias power delivery power delivery is much more rear bias than you would imagine and because of that this car feels playful and you can get more rear bias power delivery with four wheel drive sport mode which by pressing the m1 button i've already activated so now we are on manual mode for the gearbox as well and my goodness i love the way it performs in fact here i can actually select sport mode now we are in manual mode now it won't upshift unless and until i decide to do so 7000 rpm it gives you goosebumps the way it performs at 7000 rpm it is so freaking amazing now four wheel drive sport will not kill you because it lets you be a little playful but it will still intervene a little later though and that is a good thing as well Absolutely stellar! This engine is so good. The more I praise it, the less it is, and I have kept saying this a lot about AMG cars as well. Although I really feel that the ride quality is just too busy for this car to be daily driven, and the whole point of an M5 and not a sports car or super car is that you can drive it daily. Not so much here. We're going to shift into M2 mode so that I get out of four-wheel drive sport because the four-wheel drive sport mode is just a little too busy. Okay, the way it is actually like. making me stay up and be attentive as well now of course if you are driving an m5 the most important thing is that you need to find a tunnel and i have found one here but unfortunately this tunnel is closed right now so we have to go from the front lovely absolutely lovely This is the real fun of driving an M5 around the ghats it just feels so good to drive yeah you have to counter correct the steering wheel somehow that's the only thing now the good part here is the fact that the way the power is channeled is beautiful obviously i told you it's more rear biased right so what it will do it will include the front axle or it will start channeling power to the front axle when it senses a loss of traction which means that the M specific rear differential can decide how much power or torque it wants to channel to the rear wheels itself that's amazing and that's the reason why it feels so well contained absolutely stellar high speed stability making a quick overtake well you think about it and it's done because there's just so much oomph for offer i think this car is more than i mean i've never said this but this is over powerful a car it just has too much grunt it doesn't need so much power at least not for the road for sure out on the track the weight can be felt for sure but still let me tell you just get into the gas and And the funny thing is that I'm not even in the most extreme of modes because I pressed M2 and I got out of it. Here, I press M2 mode, and now you listen to this: how bonkers it can get. Ready, steady. The engine also revs very, very fast, and then you come on a bad road, and you can feel a lot on the inside. I mean, the rattles. Oh my God! The way it shifts up is nothing short of bonkers. The beauty of the M5 is that it's able to transfer its weight beautifully. Yeah, it's a heavy car. If you're looking for something which is outright sporty, the M2 is what will make more sense. But if you're looking for a car which is absolutely bonkers in every way possible, then the M5 will certainly put a massive smile on your face. You can apply brakes as late as you wish and as late as you dare and you know the car will track straight around the corners. Just don't go heavy on the throttle if you have got any of the modes, you know, altered, especially if you go into wheel drive mode. You can't make this corner straight, trust me on that. That is how rear biased it is. Of course, rear wheel drive mode my goodness i keep forgetting only this is a car you have to keep an eye on the speedometer because it just accelerates with crazy amount of thrust around the corners okay let's do this here we go i love the balance the playfulness of the chassis so good so nice so amazing as well 
what a machine what a brilliant car but the amg e63s is just better it is slower minutely 0.1 second but it is just better in every way it has that muscle car character this one feels more like i told you clinical it just feels like robotic somehow the e63 does not the e63 has lag so that is a silence before the storm and then it has an absolute maddening mid-range punch this car has punched throughout so you're like mm, you get inside and you accelerate and you're like oh it goes the problem with this car is it seems too good to be true because it is indeed just too good for its own good okay now we are in the tunnel which means let's try and hear some of that exhaust unfortunately the rain has different ideas and because the road is also wet getting hard on the gas needs some balls i hope you could hear that so yeah an amg is just louder somehow especially in the weight upshift like a gunshot this one not so much now there is a longish corner ahead and on that corner you can see the balance is beautiful the precision is really very nice and the way this m5 goes will make you feel reassured that you can do anything with this car it is just so sure footed all right here we downshift downshift you can manually take control of the gas it will not i mean upshift or downshift unless and until you decide to do so giving you complete manual control of things and as far as the comparison with the dct goes this is very smooth it's still fast enough but obviously a single clutch cannot do the job of dual clutches and that's the reason it is not as quick as a dct the dct was snap and it's done the gear shift is done this one not so much but you'll not feel it because the tuning is beautifully done it's a zf sourced box which has been adapted obviously for the bmw m5 onto the gas my goodness i love the way it performs i love this engine i actually like the heaviness of this car because it makes you feel you are putting in effort and you are the star but you are not the four wheeler system is the star here which brings me to the price of this car 1.83 crores on road mumbai it's a cbu come by the cbu route of course but that price also includes 20.5 lakhs going to the rto and 6 lakhs 32000 going for insurance of this car so you are going to be paying around 6 lakhs every year for the insurance of the bmw m5 which is indeed a lot of money what's the cost of upkeep well with the bsi package which is bmw service inclusive for 3 years 40000 kilometers for the service plus actually you pay 1.8 lakh rupees So nothing is cheap by any means of imagination left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator launch control i don't know Okay, this car actually gets launch control but the m5 is notorious for not having its launch control work so flawlessly it works properly in the m8 they need to do a software update hopefully with the lci which is already out by the way it would work better that 3.3 seconds and already cross 100 km per hour that is the madness of this car a saloon car which weighs almost 1900 kgs Go from zero to hundred kilometers per hour faster than you can blink. Okay, you can blink faster than that, but still, understand my feeling, understand my emotion. This is a fast car by every means of imagination. Before you can think of it, you will never get tired of launching this car because the way it launches is super duper aggressive. What a lovely machine! What a car! Thankfully, it doesn't have eco mode. It has an efficient mode for, of course, the engine, which actually does the upshifts much sooner. And in efficient mode, in rather all the lower modes, you don't feel the punch of this car. You are like, okay, fine, I'm driving almost a regular five series, but the suspension is like, no, you paid 1.83 crores for this car. Always reminding you that you're driving something which is extremely sporty. The suspension is just not up to scratch. The AMG E63s just has a better suspension, a better steering, a better engine because it has more character. And overall, I feel the E63 is much better than the M5. I'm sorry, all you BMW fanboys, but yeah, that's the truth. We get into M1 mode, and it says restricted driving stabilization. Confirm. Yes. Keep the M1 button pressed. It confirms the same. So M dynamic mode. It shows this car is slipping around because that's what happens. Left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator, revving the motor, and launch control doesn't work only. Absolutely stellar the way this car accelerates is mind blowing to an entirely different level altogether. Now I'll tell you what there are six modes for the gearbox as well. D1, D2, D3, S1, S2, S3. Yeah, six freaking modes for the gearbox. Which car has so many modes? This is a computer. You need to program the computer before you set off. This is insane. Absolutely insane. And this kind of takes the whole driving pressure out to a certain extent because every time you 
drive you're like okay fine first let me configure this configure that i think bmw really needs to work on the weight of the car and on the steering as well otherwise the engine is fantastic it is just a stellar engine you know what even i can shift gears but i have to like decide to shift much earlier because otherwise you will hit the red line and it feels absolutely bonkers but i'm disappointed with the sound yeah the sound could have been a lot louder i mean there are cracks there are pops and all that happening but it just doesn't have it as aggressive as an e63 which is a bit of an issue yeah it feels a little bit mellowed down and dare i say it it's more like a 90s video game here i'll tell you what it does when you're driving it very sedately now it is more of rear wheel drive it actually completely rear wheel drive mode when you drive it sedately you know why firstly you don't need the front axle at all so it doesn't engage the front drive train and the other thing is to conserve fuel yeah it has to conserve fuel conserving fuel is the biggest aim of the m5 somehow why though who cares drink the full fuel barrel as much as you like but just make me feel absolutely mad when i drive this car which i do to a great extent okay co passengers hate this car completely because you know the co passenger feels all that g's much more than the driver of course really always open the window to hear the car otherwise when you do it it does sound bonkers from the outside but those fake speak i mean the speakers look really awesome the tweeters look really amazing at night bowers and wilkins but come on we need to hear more of the car inside it needs to feel more raw and that rawness is gone it just feels perfect for its own good and that is the only disappointment i have with the m5 So guys this is my vlog of the BMW M5 competition an absolutely stellar of a car which appeals to your heart more than the head and of course that is the sense of buying a sports saloon because it's more about bragging rights and the M5 competition has more bragging rights than the regular M5 and that is one of the reasons why people would like to buy one but you should you buy one absolutely not because the LCI has already come the new M5 would be hitting India very soon and I'm sure they've addressed a lot of issues to make it smoother faster better and I hope they've sorted out the ride quality as well if you like this vlog you know what you have to do give it a thumbs up that's the like button and also subscribe to the channel i will see you guys in the next video real soon bye bye take care